Hello and welcome back. We've got another Hatha class for you today. Um, for today's props, you definitely want two blocks or whatever you're using for substitution. And you're definitely going to want a strap or whatever you're using for a substitution. Um, a blanket is probably going to be a nice option. Or once again, you can use a towel. Um, and I've got that on display here to help you remember that that's an option too. So for today, we're going to go ahead and start laying down on our backs. So if you're sitting up, go ahead and put your blanket to the side and then roll yourself down onto the floor. Now for today with what we're doing, it might be kind of nice to keep your feet flat and walk your feet wider apart so they're kind of in line with the outer edges of your mat. You can put your palms on your belly and let your knees close until they touch. Now, if your knees don't touch, that's okay. You can bring your feet back in a little closer together. They don't have to be as wide as the mat. And sometimes it actually feels better with the feet a different distance apart, so you can play with that, as well as kind of experimenting with the space between seat and feet. You can always walk your feet down a little bit, and sometimes these adjustments can help alleviate any twinging in the knees um, if you're experiencing any uncomfortable compression there. So as you put your palms on your belly, you can let your eyes close for a moment and just allow your head to get really heavy. Let it settle down towards the earth with every breath out. As you deepen your breath, let the exhales release your shoulders down to the mat. And as you deepen your breath, let your elbows settle into the earth. Your hands rest gently against your abdomen. As your breathing lowers here, you may feel the swell of your breath under your palms a little bit more than you usually do. Feel the back of your rib cage relax and your hips relax. Keep breathing long and slow and smooth down to your fingertips. Letting the knees relax onto one another. And your feet stabilize you against the earth. Take maybe two breaths here. And start to soften the breath. Let it ease its way back towards light and airy. And go ahead and slide your palms off your belly. And separate your knees. Maybe walk your feet back until they're in line with your sit bones. And from here, go ahead and find your strap. You can lengthen out the strap so it kind of drapes over your body. Bring your right knee towards your chest and loop the strap around just your big toe. This will create some nice space between your big toe and the second toe. So let the legs stretch up there. Elbows come down to either side of your body. And let your leg just kind of extend at a comfortable angle from your torso. It doesn't have to be straight up. It can be a little lower, a little bit more diagonal. And leave the left leg bent against the earth for now. You don't have to do anything special with it as we focus on your top foot here. So as you inhale, kind of spread your toes apart like you've got a strap between each and every one of them. And as you exhale, curl your toes and squeeze onto that strap in a little mini hug. Inhale, spread the toes. And exhale, wrap the strap in. Last one, inhale, spread the toes. And exhale, close them around the strap. Let your foot soften back to neutral. So you're neither clenching nor spreading, but point the whole foot. The toes will raise up. You can let the strap slide through your hands a little bit as the toes point towards the sky. Lift your head and tuck your chin towards the hollow of your throat like you're gazing down at your own belly button. And then lower the toes, lower the shoulders, lower the head at the same time. We're going to do that twice more. So point the toes, lift the head, tuck the chin. And go ahead and lower the head and let the toes come back. Last time, point. Lift the head and tuck. Toes lower, head lowers. 
go ahead and draw the knee down. You can take the strap off your toes here for a moment and just roll your ankle around. You can wiggle your toes, kind of ripple them in a little motion. And then go ahead and put your right foot down on the ground, leaving both feet flat for now. Let your arms soften alongside your body. And as you inhale, you can lift your hips and lift your right arm up to the sky. Lower the right arm down alongside your cheek. And then lift your right arm back up and lower your hand and hip at the same time so they land together. Inhale, hips up and hand back. And then lower them both down. Come back to center. Last time, hips up, arm back, and pause right here, letting the arm relax alongside your cheek. So focus on the sensation of your feet on the ground. And pretend you're trying to gather up the mat in the arches of your feet. Kind of squeeze the soles of the feet like the ball of the foot is sliding back towards the heel. You'll feel a lot more strength in the underside of your legs. From there, lift your hips up a little bit higher. Puff your heart. Full breath in. Exhale, relax the toes, relax the hips, and let the arm come down alongside your body. So go ahead and find your strap one more time. We're going to repeat the same sequence on the opposite side. So go ahead and loop the strap. Remember, today, it's around just your big toe. So there's some space between the big and the second toe there. Good. Go ahead and let the hands slide down. Elbows come to the mat. And take a moment to breathe in. Make space between the toes. Spread them wide. Exhale. Curl them in. Two more. Inhale. Separate. And exhale. Tuck and roll. Last time. Inhale. Open. Exhale, tighten. And inhale, come back to neutral. So we're going to point our foot this time, just like we did previously. So point the toes up towards the sky. Let the head lift and curl the chin down. Lower the toes, lower the head. Twice more. Here we go. Toes up, head up, curl. Lower the toes, shoulders, and head. Last one. Point, lift, curl. Lower, descend and land. All right, so take that strap off your toe, put it away, hug the knee in, roll the ankle, wiggle the toes. You can scrunch and spread a little bit here and just loosen up the foot generally. And then go ahead and put your left foot down on the ground, arms alongside your hips. Left arm will stay, uh, I'm sorry, right arm will stay, but this time we're going to move with the left. So breathe in, hips up, left arm up, lower it down towards the earth. Bring the hips down and the hand down together. Twice more, inhaling up. And exhale, everything comes back down. And this time as you inhale and come up, leave the arm where it is and focus on your feet. Scrunch up the arches of your foot. Make sure the ball of your foot doesn't lift. So keep the ball of the big toe connected. And try and slide your heels and the ball of your foot towards one another. So you're really emphasizing the arch. Once you feel nice and warm in your glutes and your hamstrings, lift your hips up a bit higher. Take a big breath in. And exhale, soften your feet, land your hips, and let your arm drift back down. Go ahead and draw both knees in. You can sway side to side, maybe roll both ankles. Isn't it funny how we all have different patterns as we roll our feet? So kind of trace your toes in the same direction to the right. Let's see that. And same direction to the left. And then see if you can kind of alternate, sweep your right toes in and your left toes in. Right toes in, left toes in. Good. Right toes out, left toes out. Lots of different ways you can roll. Good. And as you're ready, you can roll onto your side or rock yourself up and down your spine and kick yourself up to a seat. Go ahead and find that blanket or that towel and have a seat on top of it. And as you get here, let's go ahead and stretch out our left leg long. Open the right knee to the side, and we're just going to have an experiment. So from here, kind of hinge from your hips, lean forward, put your hands down on either side of your front leg. Just see how this feels today. We're just starting out. So take a few breaths and notice how you feel. And then go ahead and walk your hands back, sit up tall once more. Raise your right knee, bend your left knee, and switch sides. So right leg long, left knee open, bring the foot in, and lean forward. Just feel. Usually you'll find one side that's a little bit more, um, shall we say, reactive than the other one. So make sure your breath is still flowing within you. Walk your hands back. Sit up. Raise the left knee. Raise the right knee. Okay. 
So open your knees apart, bring the soles of the feet together. This is really gonna help make our forward folds that come after this a little bit more comfortable. So lean forward and put the balls of your thumb into the arches of your feet and give yourself a little foot massage here. So as you circle your thumbs around in the arches of your feet, take a few moments, move those thumbs up towards the top of the arch and down towards the pinky toe edge. Good, make them long, slow, leisurely strokes. Move your fingers up towards the ball of your foot and massage there for a moment. Not only does this help relax your nervous system and stimulate some circulation in your cold little toes, but what we're really focusing on here is you move your thumbs down towards the, the um, heel of your foot, circle and press there, is loosening up the connective tissue. And if the connective tissue here is really tight, it's really going to limit your forward folds. So after you take a few more strokes here, I know for me it's always hard to leave this part of the practice, go ahead and sit up. Close the knees together, and we'll try everything again. So left leg long, right knee open. Inhale up nice and tall. And as you hinge forward, see if it feels a little bit easier this time or if you go a little bit lower. As you, as you soften here, draw those toes back a little bit and press a little bit out through the ball of your big toe. So it really pulls the pinky toe back, and you can see all five toenails clearly. And then walk your hands back, sit up. Raise that right knee. Bring the left hand to the shin when you get here and turn your shoulders over towards the right side of your mat. Elongating as you breathe in. And as you exhale, pull your right hip maybe a centimeter or two towards the front of the mat. What that's going to do is square your hips around and make sure the rotation goes up the spine. So breathe in. And exhale, come back to center and we'll switch. So raise the left knee, extend the right leg. Open the left knee to the side, bring the sole of the foot in, and sit up, and then hinge over this leg and see if this feels any better than it did the first time we did it before our foot massages. So once you're here, draw the toes back a little bit so the toes stand up taller, a little more proud. Press away through the ball of your big toe a bit to square the top of your foot towards your gaze. And go ahead and walk the hands back, sit up. Raise the knee and bring the right hand to clasp the shin. Turn the shoulders towards the left. Back hand can come down to support you. Sit long and tall. Inhale. And exhale. Pull the left hip forward a little bit. You should feel your far foot shift backwards a little bit towards you as the hips center. So last breath in and out. And exhale. Turn around to face the front. Okay. So go ahead and bend your knees. And we're going to roll over to tabletop. So come onto all fours. Again, you can always put a blanket under your knees if you want, or if you're feeling okay, you can just put it to the side for now. Go ahead and come to the palms of your hands and stack your knees straight down under your hip sockets. Inhale, lift your tailbone, and lift the crown of your head so your gaze turns forward. Exhale, curl the tailbone under, and bow the head between the arms, turning the nose towards your tailbone. And then inhale, tailbone up and head up. They separate. Exhale, lift the belly and let them curl towards one another again. Let's just do two more like that for today. Inhaling, hips up, let the shoulders shrug away from the ears as you do so, and exhale, round. Maybe press through your palms. Last one. Inhale, hips up, shoulders back, gaze forward. And exhale, tuck and round, and a little bit of a press. So go ahead and let your hips come back towards your feet. Relax your belly, heart, and head down over your thighs. Soften your elbows, soften your shoulders. Give yourself time here in this child's pose. Maybe take three deep breaths. Focus on slowing down the pace of your breathing, drawing it out a bit longer, making more space within your body as your ribcage has a chance to expand a little bit more broadly. Last one. And then lift the head and bring the elbows and wrists in line with your shoulders as you stretch the palms forward, spread the fingers wide. Come up onto your knees and let your toes scoop under to support you. Even right here, scooping the toes under, you should feel kind of a nice stretch in your Achilles tendon there. So go ahead and lift the knees up. Keep them bent. Press through the palms and stretch the sit bones away from the wrists. 
can relax the heels a little bit if they go. They may not want to, and that's okay. What you can do, though, is kind of sink one heel as you bend the opposite knee, accentuate that stretch, and then bend the other knee and sink the other heel. Let's just do one more on each side. Going at your own pace, wakening the body. Come back into stillness and stretch the hips back. And go ahead and walk your feet forward. Come to a forward fold at the top of your mat. Dangle over your thighs. Nod your head yes and no. And then bend your knees. Let your hips squat down. Raise your head and shoulders until your spine is about horizontal from the mat. Reach your arms back so they're also horizontal from the mat. Keep the legs in this shape as you slowly hinge the torso up first. Press the heels down second. Raise the arms third. Sweep them towards the ceiling and bring the hands back to rest in front of your heart. Okay, so let's go ahead and sweep our arms wide one more time. Reach up, exhale wide, soften your knees, and hinge forward with the flat back before dangling the head, shoulders, and arms downwards. Palms can come to your shins as you halfway lift. Find that tabletop back once more. And exhale, go ahead and relax. Let your fingers tap and step back with the right foot, toes underneath. Lift your hips enough and slide your left foot back to join the right. Coming to the flats of both hands, the balls of your feet, with about a fist distance of space between your feet. So press your palms down, reach your hips back, and then roll your shoulders forward and flatten yourself into the top of a push-up here. Bring your knees down, uncurl your toes, and scoop your tailbone under so your back is more flat. Shoulders down the back, bend your elbows. Lower onto the front edge of your body, press the hips low. And curl the shoulders up and back as you raise your head to look forward. Exhale, relax. Press up off your belly. Toes underneath behind you. Knees up. Keep them bent as you reach the sit bones back. Maybe lower the heels a bit. And then step your feet up towards your palms. Come to the top of your mat and halfway rise. Hands to shin. Shoulders draw down the back. And exhale, relax. Bend the knees. Sink the hips low. Arms reach back to lift the shoulders up so your torso is horizontal to the ground. Good. Go ahead and keep that flat back as you hinge your shoulders and head up. Press your heels down. Open your arms. Reach tall. And exhale. Go ahead and bring the hands back to the front of your heart. So let's do it again here, starting the same way, inhaling up. Exhaling open, soft knees, flat back as you swan dive outwards and downwards. Pause for that halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, stretch the tailbone and the crown apart. And then exhale, bring your fingers down. Step only your right foot back this time, bring the toes down to the mat. Now lower your knee down to the ground. You can always place a blanket or a towel under your knee, but with the back toes curled under, you might be a little bit more comfortable than usual. So keep the back toes tucked under everybody. Bring your hands up, sweep your arms forward, bring them alongside your cheeks. And exhale, bow forward, lower your arms, and sweep your arms back alongside your hips, or maybe even up a bit higher. So let's do that again. Inhale, arms swing forward as you raise up. Exhale, arms come forward, lean down, and let the hands lift back by your hips. So the next two times, go ahead and keep doing it, inhaling up. You can add on if you want. You can keep the knee on the back, on the ground, if you want, in the back. Exhale as you sweep your arms back, or you can raise your knee up into kind of a high lunge, then bring the knee down and arms forward and raise up. So let's do one more like that. Again, the knee can stay on the earth if you want. Lower the arms, lift the knee, raise the hands, and then bring the knee down, arms forward and up. Now this time, go ahead and everybody bring your hands down to the earth, lift that back knee up, and you're going to spin the right toes towards the right edge of your mat, and plant your foot sideways so you can see the arch of your foot clearly. From here, go ahead and stand up. Sweep your arms into warrior two. I'm going to show you from the other side just so you have a better visual here. So as you keep that front knee bent, heels in line with one another, so feel free to adjust your feet. Go ahead and keep the arms level with your shoulders here. We're going to focus on this front foot. So first, I want you to take a big breath in. And as you exhale, zip your belly button up like you're pulling it towards your chin. Keep it pulling up towards your chin. And a couple of times we're going to raise up the front heel, that left heel. Let it raise straight up and sink straight back down. Now as you do this a couple of times, lifting the heel and exhale, lowering the heel, 
I want you to make sure that even as you lift your heel, you're pressing deeply down through the ball of your big toe. That's going to stop your foot from sickling and collapsing to the outer edge. So last time, lift the heel, press through the ball of your big toe, lower the heel down, keep the heel down, sweep the arms up as you straighten your front leg, and exhale, bring your hands down to your hips. Turn your feet towards the long edge of your mat so you're standing sideways, and make sure the outer edges of your feet line up and become parallel with the outer edges of your mat. So grow tall here, and exhale with a flat back, hinge forward, and like you're folding over a banister, peering over the edge. Relax your arms towards the earth. Let the crown of your head dangle. Now, once you get here, gently try and pull the mat apart through your heels. You're not going to lift your feet. You're just going to kind of keep them connected to the mat and try and spread the mat in between them. Good. And from here, we're going to kind of rock our weight forward towards the ball of our foot. Not necessarily lifting the heel, but just feel how it is when all the weight shifts towards the front edge of your foot. Then shift your hips back a bit and feel how the experience is when all the weight comes towards the heel. So do that one or two more times. Bring the weight back. And then kind of slow down your rocking so you feel like you have balanced weight between the front and the back of the foot. Where is center? Good. Take a deep breath in center. In and out. And then raise up about halfway. Bring the hands to the edges of your hips and soften your knees so they're not locked before you start to hinge back up to standing at the top, uh, broad on the side of your mat. Turn your left toes out towards the front. And we're going to bend your front knee over your heel one more time in warrior two like we did a moment ago. So make sure too that your knee tracks towards the pinky toe of your foot just a little bit so it doesn't collapse inward. As the knee draws open, you maintain that healthy arch down there in your foot. We want that. So raise your hands up to shoulder height. And as you raise your arms up to shoulder height, take a moment and give the back arm a break. Lower the right arm down. Turn the left palm towards the ceiling. Raise the arm up alongside your ear. Breathe in here. And make sure you exhale and zip your belly button upwards so it's lifted and strong. Slide your back hand down your leg. Let your shoulders shift towards your back heel. And keeping the ball of your front foot heavy, raise up the heel. Now make sure you're pressing down a little bit through the ball of your big toe. Hold it here for five. I'm going to count you down. Four, three, two, one. Go ahead and lower the front heel. Raise the top arm. Bring the top arm down and let the elbow land on the shelf of your front thigh with the palm flipped up. And then sweep the top arm up overhead, your new top arm, your back arm. Hovering close to your cheek. Again, we're going to hold side angle pose for five, four, countdown helps, three, because nothing lasts forever, two, one. Sweep up through your right arm, raise your left arm, land the back hand on your thigh, and let the left arm rise up alongside your cheek. Remember to raise up your belly, slide your back hand down into reverse warrior. Pause here, raise your front heel. Press through the ball of your big toe to keep it centered for, guess what, five, four, three, two, one. Lower the heel, lean the shoulders forward, bring the elbow down to the thigh, back arm sweeps up, extend over your cheek and hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Lower your top arm down, bring it to the inner edge of your foot. Remove the elbow from your knee and place the other hand on the outer edge of your foot. Lift your knee up in the back or your heel up. Spin your toes to point forward and bring the knee all the way down to the ground. Again, a blanket or a towel can help create some cushion here. Now, you're going to want to probably have some blocks nearby. I'm going to pull my blocks back just because I want you to have a visual of my front foot. So you're going to raise up your toes and balance on the back of your heel. I like my blocks high here it takes a lot of weight off of that front leg and makes this a little bit more doable. So as you balance on the back of your heel with the toes standing tall, walk your blocks, or if you don't need them, walk your hands back closer to your hips and let your hips come down closer to your back heel. Now again, if you can sit on your back heel, and this isn't very challenging for you, walk your blocks or your hands forward, plant the foot, use the toes to scoot your leg farther away from you, and repeat the process. Lift the toes, balance on the heel, walk the blocks back, Sink the hips down, 
you don't get so far this time. You can do that a couple of times until you find a good distance for your challenge today. And go ahead and I want you to pull the left hip back a bit so you're not shifting and rocking your hip sideways. And as you pull your left hip back, press away through the ball of your left big toe. All five toenails in view. Maybe even spread them. And then as you're ready, you can bend your knee, walk your blocks forward, put that front foot back on the ground, and put the blocks off to the side so you can bring your hands down to the mat. Raise the back knee up, lift the hips up, bump them a bit to the sky so you have space to slide the front foot towards the back and come into down dog. Bend your knees if you want and press your hips away from your palms. Take a moment to inhale and exhale. And from here, go ahead and step your right foot forward towards the spot between your thumbs. If you don't get all the way up there, no problem. You can always use your toes to scooch. Or sometimes it helps to take your right hand and pick up your foot and just place it in the center of your thumbs. So once you're here, spin on the ball of your back foot so the toes point to the left and the heel drops down to the right. Lift up your hands. Come to standing. And I notice my heels are not aligned here. My feet are all askew. So take a second and line up your heels with one another. The back toes can tip inwards a little bit if you'd like, if it makes you more comfortable. Bend the front knee so it's over that front heel. And then open the arms front to back again in warrior two. So from here, start with your breath. Breathe in. And as you exhale, raise your belly up within you. Feel like it's climbing up to snuggle in the center of your heart. And three times, lift that front heel up. Remember to keep weight in the ball of your big toe and lower it down. You don't have to lift it up a lot, but just keep the whole ball of your foot grounding so that it's stable as you raise your heel the last time and then put it down. Keep it down. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the hands to the hips. Turn the feet sideways once more. Outer edges of the feet parallel with the outer edges of your mat. Grow tall and hinge forward. Let the hands dangle, let the head and neck release so they're heavy. And keep your heels connected to the mat, but try and slide them a little bit apart. You should feel your legs rotate inwards a bit and a lot of nice space being made across the back of your hips. And from here, maybe you can rock the weight forward towards your toes and backwards towards your heels, it's kind of like a tree blowing in the wind, drifting slowly back and forth. And as you slow down your drifting, find that space where the weight is equal between the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot. If everybody's doing their part, take a breath in center. And then rise up about halfway, hands to the hips, softness in the knees, and hinging with a flat back up to standing, straightening your legs the rest of the way. So go ahead and turn your right toes forward. Let the back toes turn in a bit. Again, adjust your stance so the heels are in line with one another. And just like before, bend the front knee and bring it down over your heel. Now, if you bend your knee and it goes way past your heel, all you have to do is scoot your foot forward a little bit. But make sure you don't bend your knee so far forward that you pick up the outer edge of your back foot. That's too much. So find that happy place where your knee is above your heel and you can press down and ground through the outer edge of your left foot. So from here, go ahead and put your right hand on your thigh and raise your left arm up towards the ceiling. Remember, bring it close to your cheek. Lift your belly up as you breathe out. Keep it lifted as you slide the hand down the back leg towards your knee. Pause right here. Raise your front heel. I find this harder just because we're not able to see it here, but keep some weight in the ball of your big toe. Five. Four, three, two, one. Lower the heel down. Lift the right arm up. Bring the right elbow to your thigh. And let the left arm lift. Palm rotates forward. And lower the arm close to your ear along the top edge of your body for five, four, three, two, one. We'll do one more of each. So inhale. Bring that left arm up. Raise the right arm towards your cheek as the left palm settles on your thigh. Lean your shoulders back. Keep the belly button lifted upwards. Hover that heel. Weight in the ball of the big toe. Five, four, 
three, two, one. Lower the heel and sweep the right arm up before lowering it down to your leg. Rest it there. Raise your left arm up alongside your ear. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Lower this left arm down past your nose. Let the hand come down to tickle the earth. Right foot to the outer edge of your foot. Lift up your back heel and pivot on your back foot so the toes point forward and then bend the left knee, come down to the ground. Again, grab your blanket if you want some cushion. I'm going to reach for the blocks because I have short arms and I can't ground myself without a little bit of extra help here. So I'm going to bring the blocks back so you can see. Raise the toes up, balance on your heel, then walk the blocks back to straighten out your front foot. Lengthening the leg. Again, if your heel sits down on your back leg, then walk the blocks forward. Use the toes to move yourself a little bit farther out. Then repeat, toes up, blocks back, and sink. Press away a little bit through the ball of your big toe. You don't want the sole of your foot to face either the left side of the mat or the right side of your mat, we just want to face the top of the mat. Go ahead and bring the blocks forward, knee up, foot down, blocks to the side, raise the back knee up, and this time step that back foot in as many steps as you need towards the top of your mat, so you come to standing. Halfway lift, exhale, relax. Bend your knee, let the hips lower down, let the arms reach back and let that draw your shoulders up until your spine is horizontal. Keep the bend in the knees as the shoulders hinge back, heels press down, arms climb high, and exhale, hands come back together in front of your chest. Okay, from here, I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see as we practice our balance. So you can stay facing the top of your mat or wherever you can see pretty well. Put your hands on your hips and let the toes point forward so your feet are parallel. So go ahead and lean your weight into the ball of your feet Lift your heels up and then put your heels down. Remember to keep weight in the ball of your big toe. That's really going to help the weight stay centered. Up, slow rise, slow descent. Usually you can get a lot higher if you let your feet sickle to the outside, but we don't want to do that. So try it again. Heels up, ball of the big toe heavy, rise and lower. It gets a little bit easier. So we're going to challenge ourselves here. Let the heels rise up, keep weight in the ball of your big toe. And as you balance in the balls of your feet, raise your arms out to either side, say shoulder height. Good, keep the weight in the balls of the big toe as you pivot your shoulders towards the right. Pull the right hip forward a little bit so it doesn't turn back. Slowly glide yourself back to horizontal and pivot the shoulders over towards the left. Pull your left hip forward a little bit to keep the hips centered. Come back to center. Lower your heels. Lower your hands. Good. From the top of the mat, inhale, rise up. Exhale, open your arms, soften your knees, and hinge yourself downwards once more. Dangle over your toe tips. Hands to your shins. Rise up halfway and stretch your spine long. And then exhale, go ahead and bend the knees. Put the hands on the mat. It can be fingertips if you want, and you're going to step both feet towards the back, lift the hips up, keep the knees soft, and stretch the wrists and pull and hips apart. And then go ahead and bring your knees down, uncurl your toes, let your hips come back into that child's pose here. Again, melting your arms, melting your shoulders, melting your neck, softening your whole upper body into your lower body. Maybe two more breaths here, giving yourself time to slow down. And taking your time, you can lift your hips, your shoulders, your head up to hands and knees, 
and come around till you're on your sit bones. So once you're on your sit bones, find that blanket or towel and sit up on it. It'll make you a little bit more comfortable when you do so, hopefully. Go ahead and fold your legs in front of you for now. Make sure you have, there it is, your strap pretty close by to you. We're going to use it in just a second. So take your right leg out to the side, kind of wide at an angle, off on a diagonal line. Now, keep this leg on this diagonal line, but bend the right knee and plant the foot down. So the knee is just kind of like a bit to the outside of your shoulder here. Find your strap. Unroll your strap. Lift your toes on the right here and loop the strap around the, the big toe, just like we did on our back at the very beginning. So stretch that leg back out on its diagonal line and hold both ends of the strap in your right hand all on its own. You can walk that arm down the strap until your elbow is nice and long, but keep your shoulders centered over your hips. You don't want to lean forward just yet. Raise your left arm up towards the ceiling and then bend your right elbow. Draw the elbow down towards your thigh as the shoulders dip over that straight leg. Now, if you can go down pretty low and you're doing okay, you can always roll the strap around your wrist to bring the hand closer to your foot. Or if you're pretty close, you can always remove the strap and just put your first two fingers around your big toe and pause there. Remember to gently press away through the ball of your big toe to keep the foot from sickling inwards. And then rise up when you're ready. Slide the hand up the strap. Remove the strap. Put it to the side. Good. So just like we did to get into this pose, bend the knee up, put the foot down. But this time, put the foot right down the center of your mat so the knee is kind of centered in front of your heart. So once you're here, put the left hand around the shin. Turn the heart towards the right side and let the right fingers come down to the ground behind you. As you inhale, remember to elongate up through the crown of your head. And as you exhale, you can pull your right hip just a smidgen forward. You'll feel the rotation a bit deeper wrapping you in across your midsection. Okay, go ahead and turn back to the front. So what we're going to do is keep the front foot in this centralized location. Just flip the knee open to the side and rock to the outer edge of your foot. So it's not quite tucked back under your knee. It's still got that spotlight space right in the middle of your mat. So slowly start to flex your foot a little bit, and then lean forward. Put your hands down on either side of the foot. Remember to press away through the ball of your big toe. Not so much that you lift the knee, but enough that you feel a little bit of length here in the inner calf. It should make this a little bit more comfortable because it keeps the rotation up here in the hip instead of letting the knee twinge. Sometimes when I'm here, especially if my toes are cold, I like to wrap my hands around my toes, kind of bend forward, or you can keep the hands on either side of the foot either way. And then go ahead and lift your shoulders and head, lean back a little bit. Once you get upright, you can then tuck that heel securely under your knee, come back to Sukhasana, comfortable upright seat. We're going to do the same two things on the other side. So take your left leg out at an angle. Bring the sole of the foot in towards your inner thigh. Find your strap. Just kind of keep a hold of it, and you're going to raise the left knee up. Put the left foot down. Remember to keep the knee open wider than your shoulder here. Raise the toes, standing up on your heel, and loop the strap around the big toe only. Let the leg lengthen back out so it's long and straight where it started. Hold the strap in your left hand. Let the left hand walk down the strap a bit so the elbow is long, and then let go with your right hand so your shoulders face sideways. Your shoulders are always going to face sideways. Raise your right arm up. Bend your bottom elbow like you want to set your elbow down on your thigh bone. Let yourself lean sideways. Again, you can wrap the strap around your wrist a couple of times or even around your fingers as you get closer to the ball of your big toe. Remember to press away through the ball of your big toe to keep that foot square. Go ahead and take another breath. Raising up through the top arm, you can slowly unwind your hand from the strap. Lengthen that bottom arm out, lower the top arm down. Take the strap off your toe. And go ahead and bend the knee. Foot flat, front and center. 
Now, as you're here in front and center, bring your right hand to the shin. Turn your shoulders towards the left. Sit up tall. And exhale, remember to draw your left hip forward just a little bit. You'll feel it deepen across your belly. Last breath. And exhale, de-rotate back to center. So I'm going to show you from the side. We're going to do the same thing. Open the knee to the side. Keep the foot front and center. Just in case you're not seeing that very well from this angle. Hopefully it's better from this angle. You can see the sole of the foot completely. So draw the toes back a little bit. And then lean forward. Remember to press out through the ball of your big toe. Put your hands on either side of your front foot. Or you can give your toes a little hug. Keeping the foot in this shape, keeping the toes drawing back and the ball of your big toe pressing away. Slow, deep breaths really help here. Now notice I'm not pulling with my arms. Hopefully it doesn't look like that. You just kind of rest. Let your hands warm yourself. And go ahead and hinge back up. And you can tuck that heel underneath your shin back to where you started. So from here, let's go ahead and bring our knees up. Uncross the ankles. Scoot off the blanket. Put the blanket to the side. We're going to go ahead and lay down onto our backs. You don't need to have any props available. Unless you'd like something under your head for a little bit of cushion, you can put a blanket or a towel. So as you get here, go ahead and bring your knees in towards your heart and give a little wibble wobble. <sighs> Maybe roll your ankles around and see what direction you naturally want to move. Maybe try another direction or other movements to loosen up your feet and your ankles. And then keep the thighs close to your belly as you relax your arms wide. Take a nice breath in here. And as you exhale, lower the knees over towards the left, letting the right hip come up off the ground until the whole outer left leg is supported by the ground and your right hip is stacked high above your left hip. Roll your gaze over towards the right. And if you'd like here, you can always take your left hand and cup the outer right knee, sometimes adding that little bit of weight just by setting your hand down lightly can help anchor you and increase whatever rotation you feel across your abdomen. Bring your gaze back up towards the ceiling. Release the hand from the top of your knees. Bring your knees back up towards the ceiling. We're just going to do the same thing the opposite side. So lower your knees over towards the right. Let the left hip lift so it's stacked sideways. Maybe you put your right hand on top of your outer left knee. Roll your gaze over towards the left. Bring your gaze back to center. Before lifting the knees, bringing the knees back to center. And as you hold on to your legs here, tuck your fingers in between your calf and your thigh. So the fingers are now nice and warm in the back of your legs. So go ahead and inhale, draw your knees apart. And exhale, draw your knees together. Kind of like a butterfly sleepily flapping its wings. Knees open, breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. Do that a time or two more, and I'm just going to change my angle. So maybe you can see from a different perspective. As the knees inhale open, let the feet separate open, too, and exhale together. So inhale last time. Leave the knees wide so you feel like the thighs are beyond the edges of your waistline. And then flex your feet up towards the ceiling, kind of flex your toes back. And you have a couple of options here. See how it would feel if you put your hands on the front of your shins, kind of up towards your ankles. Or if you maybe took your first two fingers 
and wrap them around your big toe. So if you're not comfortable holding onto your big toe, go back to your shin bones. And if you're not comfortable on your shin bones either, cup the back of your, your thighs where you started. All right, you can press away through the ball of that big toe a little bit. And wherever you are, I'm going to do it with all three arm variations so you can see. We're going to use our breath to change it up a little bit. So as you inhale, take a nice breath in. And as you exhale, swing your feet towards one another until they touch or get close to touching, letting your knees wing wide. Inhale, separate the feet back towards the ceiling. And exhale, swing your knees wide, feet come closer together. I'll do it twice more. Hands on the shins. Exhale, let your elbows be on the inside of your knees so you can pivot. And back to center. Let's do one more. I'll show you with hands on the toes. Draw the toes in. Let the knees wing open really like a butterfly now. And then come back. Soles of the feet to the sky. So holding your toes here, I'm going to show you from a different angle. What you're going to do is swing your feet together. Let your knees open side to side. Make those butterfly wings. See if you can keep the soles of your feet together as you release your hands from wherever they are. Let the outer edges of your pinky toes drift downwards. Sweep your arms up, bending your elbows softly, and letting your arms come to the earth. The hands can separate if you want. Sometimes what I like to do is interlace my fingers so the palms are cupped up. And then bring the knuckles towards the earth so that the elbows and the knees are all in the same shape. But you don't have to. If that feels a little demanding, then unlace your fingers and let your arms slide down. So take a few moments just to breathe. Maybe close your eyes. See if you can feel the belly beginning to rise and fall. Just a little bit. Not so much as the chest, but at least a hint. Last breath. Taking your time. Let the arms lower down alongside your rib cage and waistline. Lift just the right knee up and pivot the foot flat to the mat. And then lift your left knee up and pivot that foot flat to the mat. So go ahead last time and draw your knees in. Rock a bit, sway a bit, maybe even circle your knees a bit here. Trace them around in big wide orbits over your belly. Next time you come to your belly, go the opposite way. So go ahead and sweep the knees the other direction. Circle back. And eventually coming back to center over your abdomen. And put your feet down and see how comfortable you might feel now stretching your legs out long. So as you stretch your legs out long, know that you don't have to stay here. If you're still feeling a little resistance from your low back, then go ahead and bend the knees just like we did in the beginning, feet wide. Knees touching, making a triangle shape between knees and heels across the mat. So find a place that your legs and your low back are comfortable. Maybe even spread the heels a bit wider if your legs are long. That can help a lot. And if your shoulders are tight, maybe spread your arms a little bit wider. If that feels a little weird, you can bring the arms down closer to your waist. That's fine. You can rock a bit on your head side to side. Find where it's comfortable landing. Maybe even tip your chin up and down a little bit to find the right length in the back of your neck. And come into stillness here. Let the head soften, let the shoulders and arms relax. Let the muscles across your chest in front of your heart let go. Melt the muscles across your belly. Let your hips get heavy. Your legs be loose and easy. Soft in your ankles and feet and toes. Give them a lot of attention today. They may feel a little, a little warm even. That's just fine, but lengthen out the cooling aspect of your breath. before letting the breath drop away. 
into subtle, into simple. Spend a few moments here resting. Starting to feel a rise and fall of your chest as you breathe. You can let the breath deepen if you'd like. As you feel a little bit more of a stretch on your inhales, a little bit deeper release on your exhales. Breathe down into your belly as you start to move your fingers and toes. You can roll your wrists and ankles. If you'd like to reach your arms back behind you, you can draw the legs together a bit, point, flex, and relax and re-soften. Let the knees bend up as the feet come back flat to the earth. Roll over onto your side in either direction you want, lifting your head and your shoulders, then raising your knees up and settling yourself back into a comfortable seat. Whatever that looks like, I'm going to grab a blanket here as my... Ankles cross. Put your hands a moment in front of your heart. Let them join together. Let the eyes close, letting the eyelids join together. Sink mindfully and with awareness into that softness and openness and spaciousness that you've created today. And then we'll close with our chant for peace. You can always join or listen as you're comfortable in this moment. Breathe in deeply when you're ready. Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and that freedom for all. Raising your thumbs up to your forehead. Honoring the light within one and all as we bow forward to the mantra, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us again today. 
Um, hope you enjoyed the practice. I hope you are staying safe, feeling healthy, and we'll have another recording up for you very shortly. Keep checking our Facebook page and our website. And if you're not sure where to get access to all the links, I'm not the only one who's teaching. There's a couple of different teachers on different platforms. Feel free to go to our website at harmonyyogava.com. You can register for a student account, and that'll put you on our mailing list to get the addresses for all of these video offerings that we're creating. And that way you'll stay up to date and in touch with us as things evolve and change over the next couple of weeks. So enjoy your day, enjoy your practice, and I'll see you again before too long, I hope. Take care.